Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Agave Talk, your number one source for everything agave. We appreciate you being here with us today. Today we are checking out something you cannot not see, right? You cannot not see this when you go out. Tequila 1800. Whether you like it, whether you hate it, whether you're a purist, whether you're not, whatever you are, if you're just learning about tequila, if this is your go-to, if you can't stand it, I mean, oh my gosh, there is so much, so much to talk about today. Tequila 1800 coming out of NOM1122, Casa Cuervo. Yes, if you did not know, 1800 is a brand from Jose Cuervo. This is made in the Jose Cuervo Mundo Cuervo Distillery. To be completely honest, Mundo Cuervo, one of my favorite places on earth. Yes, I said it, I said it. Say what you want. Jose Cuervo makes some quality, quality tequila. All right, where's the pitchforks? Bring them. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Hit me on Instagram, all right? DM me, send me a message. You want to argue? I said it. I love Jose Cuervo, all right? However, today the focus is on 1800. Um, going back to Cuervo, though, the reality is, is that the Cuervo family just, I mean, hats off. You have to give respect to the Cuervo family just for what they've done for tequila, the community. I mean, when you think of tequila, more than likely the majority of people are thinking Jose Cuervo around the world. I know for people who follow us, you know we're living in Lima, Peru right now. And uh, you know we drink high quality stuff, you know, born and raised Florida, South Florida at that, woohoo, right? And being in Florida and in South Florida, we have such, such a collection, huge access to everything. But the reality is, is the rest of the world, they're getting big name, big brand stuff. And the majority of that is coming from several houses such as Jose Cuervo and a couple other brands, all right? But again, hats off. You have to give hats off to Jose Cuervo because they've made it, um, in a sense, when you say tequila, and if you ask somebody anywhere in the world, hey, what do you think of tequila? Or can you think of a specific brand? More than likely, they're going to say Jose Cuervo, right? So today, though, the focus is on 1800. And 1800 is a unique brand. Uh, this is a lot of people's very first for, foray, foyer. Am I saying one of those right? I think I'm saying them both wrong right? This is the first rodeo. We'll go there. This is a lot of uh, people's very first rodeo uh, into drinking something of quality, okay? Now, am I saying this is quality, right? That's not the words that came out of my mouth. What I am saying, though, is that this is absolutely marketed as something premium, as something of quality. And I can tell you, I've traveled many places in the world. And when I do come across tequila, this is usually what you see in some of the higher end restaurants, higher end clubs, things like that. They're going to have 1800 and marketing it as something premium. Why? Because the selection around the world is few and far between. And when you see something list like this, I mean, honestly, hats off. I do love the bottle of 1800, right? This you this is an iconic bottle. You can't knock them for marketing. This is iconic. And I truly do love the shape of this bottle and just the branding on 1800 for sure, right? Uh, we will go into the bottle. There is a reason it looks like this pyramid, kind of cool. There's a reason for 1800. I mean, we're gonna check out the crest today. There's a whole lot, all right? So if you're still with us and uh, you don't hate me yet for saying I love Jose Cuervo, I appreciate you being here, all right? I definitely appreciate you being here. So, I mean, overall, looking at the bottle, very, very just kind of straight to the point, but iconic at the same time. Many of you probably have had 1800 or if you have not, uh, you know, hey, cool. You're here now and you're going to learn something. For the people who have had 1800 and maybe you're not a big fan of it, nothing wrong with that, right? My go-to nine tenths out of time is going to be something completely different from 1800. However, being here in Peru, I was able to get this and we're doing a review, right? 
I'm also going to be reviewing the following week, 1800 Cristalino. Yes, uh, this is their ultra premium. So Jose Cuervo markets 1800 as a premium line, right? 1800 Cristalino, their Clear Añejo, whatever you feel about Cristalinos, they're marketing this as luxury. And I'm telling you right now, here in Lima, Peru, and many other places in the world, you can actually see they got this. I did get this in Lima, but they imported, brought this over directly from Mexico, right? Uh, <clears throat> I can tell you right now, this is marketed as luxury. You will see this in high-end hotels, high-end restaurants, bars, clubs, things like that. And it is going for a pretty penny for what it is. And people, when you got this, they're, they're looking at you like, ooh, that's fancy, right? I mean, look at it. Super, super, super unique. I mean, they still kept the pyramid, but just the branding on this with the black, the silver, the diamonds, they are going for a luxury, luxury look, all right? Again, guys, branding, marketing 101. I mean, whether you agree or not, you're a tequila purist, cool, great. This is marketing and it works, all right? So back to the 1800 and kind of looking at this bottle, the bottle itself, 1800, let's get right into that. The name, the name has significance. Now, understand the Jose Cuervo family, right? The Cuervo family has been producing tequila since the 1700s. Yes, 1700s, all right? Now, you can go Google that. I'm not going to get too into depth in this video, but definitely I highly suggest anybody to go look at the history of 1800, especially if you are somebody who is a tequila snob, you like tequila, you're getting into tequila, you think you know tequila, anything about tequila, go Google Jose Cuervo, read up on that history, and you need to humble yourself. Do not say you hate Jose Cuervo. Jose Cuervo deserves the respect that they should be getting. But unfortunately, a lot of times Jose Cuervo gets pooped on, right? Oh, you're drinking Jose Cuervo. Oh, you're drinking Jose Cuervo. The reality is, yeah, the juice, the mixed of Jose Cuervo gold, trash, right? Hot garbage. But the reality is the history behind that name, the history behind that family um, again, you got to give the respect. You got to give hats off. And that's why I say I love Jose Cuervo for sure for everything they did for the tequila community and the people of Mexico as well. Again, go Google that. Go Google that. All right. Because once you Google that, you'll realize that, again, they've been producing stuff since 1800s. I mean, they were the first distillery to get like a land grant from Spain to produce tequila because it was once banned. But then they started talking about taxes and huge history lesson, all right? And by the time 1800 rolled out, uh, that's when they're saying some of the first official tequila was produced, 1795, 1800, right? But also too, it's the first year tequila was aged in wood. So again, the history, the history behind this bottle, guys, you have to give respect to the name. Put some respect on my name, right? You have to give some respect to the Jose Cuervo family um, and also just to the history behind it, all right? But again, really, I highly encourage anyone to go and Google that for sure uh, because again, really, really, really interesting history there, all right? But Going a little deeper into this, not just the name 1800, right? Looking at this crest. So let me get that on in there really close so you can see that crest. The crest on here, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of that history, right? So right here, looking at this crest, at the very top, you can see a Mayan pyramid. The symbol of the Mayan pyramids are found throughout Mexico and they are giving that nod like, yes, heritage. We are Mexican, right? We have that Mayan blood, that Mayan descent. It is there represented in that crest. The initials, a cross and the letters, J and B, right? So you see a cross and you see the letters JB. It stands for Juan Domingo Beckman, their owner. There you go, all right? Juan Domingo Beckman, that is the owner. And the cross... The cross itself, they didn't give an explanation. <laughs> so if you do want to check this out, I am reading directly from the 1800tequila.com website, all right? 
they don't give an explanation for the cross. However, um, in a lot of Latin American countries, there is a lot of religion still, religion rules in a lot of places, and there is still a lot of respect for uh, Catholicism, for sure. But this doesn't look like a normal, normal cross. If anybody knows exactly what that cross is uh, represents or means, please put down in the comments below. We would appreciate it. Also, too, looking down here, you can see a ribbon, and it says, Trabajo, Pasión, Honestidad. Okay, cool. So, trabajo, pasión y honestidad, what that means is hard work, passion, and honesty. So, right up, up front, hard work, passion, and honesty, you got 1800, JB, the Mayan pyramids, you got this fancy stuff going on. Again, there's a lot of symbolism within this bottle, which brings us to the bottle itself. Let me move that back out a shot. So the bottle itself is actually a nod to Mayan pyramids, okay? So you got this like trapezoidal shape. It does look like a pyramid jetting out from the ground. They're given more respect to the history of Mexico. Um, something cool with this bottle, back in the day, 1800 actually used to have a glass top that was hollow and you could turn it up and they actually marketed it this way. It was like the tequila that gives you a shot, the only brand that gives you a shot, right? You could turn it up and it was kind of awkward. You had to like hold it sideways and like pull off the top at the same time. And it was actually poured yourself a shot, right? But now they're just using these uh, big giant plastic kind of uh, uh, toppers on there, right? Um, across the neck, 100% agave. We got some lot numbers going on there, bottle numbers, right? Um, this is coming in at 40%, even though we got it here, this is 40%. Normally it's 38%. I know the Cristalino is 38%. And um, just on the back, you will just see some regulatory stuff. Again, you guys see that we did buy this in Peru and um, a little bit of this story, all right? So they are saying the agave is harvested and handpicked from their highland ranches and double distill for a smoother, cleaner flavor, blah, 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 and blend it together for added complexity and character. What are they blending with? Not sure, but we are about to check it out. All right. <laughs> so with that said, I am going to open this uh, plastic right here and then pour this out. If you have drunk 1800, cool, great. I hope some of the information across the bottle, what 1800 means, um, was something new for you. And I encourage you again to go look that up and read about the history of Jose Cuervo. If this is your first time with us, well, we appreciate you being here with us for sure. Uh, taking off this top, again, just kind of cheap and plastic screw top. This does not have a pour stop, but I will pour this out. And again, we appreciate you being here with us. If you have not done so already, please hit that like and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at Agave Talk. All right. Great, great, great. So let me get this top back on. Let me bring this up to the camera and bring that over, right? Taking a look here at the legs and tears. Um, pretty sticky. You can see it kind of in the back right there, just kind of sticking around, not really going much anywhere. Um, now it's starting to run, all right? Uh, super clear, super clear. They do call this a silver, no plata, nothing like that. No blanco. 1800 silver, all right. Uh, really super crystal clear in color. Um, let's take a smell of this. <sighs> all right, so as you smell it, and again, you, you, you gotta give a little respect to 1800. You have to, I gotta give them some respect. They have marketed 1800 across the world. Now, is there more premium tequilas out there, better quality, high handcrafted, small batch, absolutely, right? But when you're thinking about the rest of the world, their access to tequila is few and far between, and especially something of quality. So this is 100% agave. And when you do bring it to the nose, you are getting agave. Like there is some ethanol there for sure. It's not like a super diffuser bomb. If you watched our videos explaining how it's easily, um, how diffuser tequilas are really easily identifiable, it's going to smell really like nail polish remover or nail polish, right? This is not terrible. So 
Off the top of my head, I don't remember if 1800 is a diffuser made tequila, but smelling it, you're not getting a lot of hints of, of diffuser, of hints of diffuser, like the chemical, that nail polish remover, right? But I don't believe the 1800 Silver Line is diffuser made. Um, and you can't really get a lot of, you're not getting that telltale sign again of like nail polish. You are getting agave, which is surprising, right? But again, that's why when somebody brand new to tequila or thinks they know tequila just from drinking Jose Cuervo Mixto, right? When you put this in front of them, it's going to be like, okay, wait, this is different, right? This is different. And that smack of agave is really a defining character, right? So it's not like a super huge agave bomb, but there's definitely agave first and foremost. Uh, however, on the end of that, you are getting alcohol, ethanol, right? So it's not an agave bomb, but there's definitely agave. Black pepper for sure. And it's kind of, it's kind of like vegetal, uh, green grass, little bit of mineral in the back, back in there, but more, more vegetal and green than mineral, but there is some minerals in there for sure. Mm. All right. So again, 1800 silver, I mean, really straight to the point, nothing super complex, but nothing off putting. Let's take a sip. Cheers. Mm. All right. So weird. <laughs> agave, as soon as it hits your, your, your mouth, agave. As I swallowed, I'm getting overrun with black pepper and alcohol, right? ethanol and black pepper and they market this like oh it's double distilled super smooth i mean they're <clears throat> smooth is subjective right but it's definitely got some alcohol burn on there for sure but it's more along the lines of like a really strong black pepper okay um it is a little bit uh, uh you're getting kind of some of that that um nail polish remover, right? Like acetone, right? You are getting some of that nail polish remover taste in there. You really are. Uh, but again, kind of those veggie notes, even citrus maybe. Let me take another sip. Mm. Yeah, even a little bit of citrus in there, like uh, orange uh, rind, right? Zest. Um, kind of fighting with the, the, the vegetableness, that grass, that earthiness, right? But overall, after that second sip, still you are getting hit with the agave first and foremost, but it's then just really washed away quickly by that black pepper alcohol ethanol taste and a little bit of acetone nail polish, right? But underlying, as I'm sitting here talking, I mean, it's not super off-putting. Um, as I talk, it does leave a little bit of a burnt taste in your mouth but like not good burnt kind of like um like asphalt right rubber even um and if you watch our videos especially our mezcal you you know we love our mezcals just like dirty right grimy yeah but in our tequilas nah i don't want my tequila to taste like rubber i don't want it to taste like asphalt all right <laughs> and there's a little hint of that for sure as i keep talking but i mean again overall 1800 it's it's not my go-to it's not something i keep in stock um but here in lima peru again i got this bottle and i mean it's gonna make for a solid margarita a solid mixed drink it's a kind of a gateway drug if somebody sees this bottle here family or friends oh i've seen that before in the bars or that's supposed to be good all right yeah here, let me pour you a little bit of this. Taste that, great. And then I hit them with something of super high quality, which I imported from the States, right? So 
Overall, gateway drug, 1800 for sure. Uh, personal quest, if you made it to this video, 1800 actually does some really cool artist work. Um, they have an artist series that they've been releasing over the years. And one of the very first artist series they released, I want to say it was in 2012, 2010, 11, 12, or 13, I think 2012, where they have artists decorate the bottles. There was a bottle, and unfortunately, somebody threw it away. Family member. Um, we still talk about that. Still talk about that till this day. Um, there was a bottle where it had like this owl in the back. All right, it was like this sleepy-looking owl. I'm gonna try to find a photo and maybe put it up here. If anybody sees this bottle, please, please, please. I mean, I even reached out to the artist, and she doesn't even have a bottle anymore. If anybody has that bottle, please send me a message on Instagram. I would love to buy that from you, all right? Let's make a deal. Let's make something happen. I would love to have that bottle. Um, overall, too, 1800 itself and the Jose Cuervo brand, they do do some really good stuff. Uh, the 1800 Millennial, right? Jose Cuervo Reserva de Familia. Check those reviews out. I reviewed the entire lineup. Um, I love Jose Cuervo, man. I love them for sure. They do some great stuff in a history. You can't knock it. But 1800 Silver, not my cup of tea, all right? Not something I really keep around, but I got to respect it. I'm not going to hate on it at all. And if anybody does hate on 1800 Tequila, they're just a hater for sure, all right? Or they're just echoing what a bunch of other tequila snobs are saying. They're not making their own decisions. Us here at Agave Talk, me, myself, and I, hey, man, respect to 1800, respect to Jose Cuervo for sure. But trust me, I'm going to be drinking some other stuff. Absolutely, all right? But again, hey, it's not super terrible. So <laughs> overall, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video for sure. Please, if you have not done so already, hit that like and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at Agave Talk. All right. Thank you for being here with us and take care, everybody.